People say to me, well, what, what have you accomplished over the years? Well, in the, in the early years, after we established the interim newspaper, the pro-life newspaper that's been around for over 30 years, and the reason we started it was because we had the late abortionist of Dr. Bernard Dan Nathanson come from New York City. He was one of the founders of the pro-abortion movement in the U.S. So we invited him here. We had a big uh, media uh, conference at the Sutton Place Hotel. There were scribes all over the place for the newspapers and magazines. There were microphones all along here. There were television cameras everywhere. And the event virtually was not reported. We called them back and said, okay, would you do some, some pro-life uh, commercials for us? So he said, sure, I'd be happy to. So he showed through ultrasound the life of the child in the womb. And so then we thought, oh, this is fabulous. We had three of these commercials and they're ready to go. So we went off to the, the uh, various networks. No, we won't take them. CTV said, they're pornographic. <laughs> now today, if you saw them, you'd say they were so innocuous. They were just showing the child in the womb. It was absolutely amazing. So we went to CHC, CHTV in Hamilton, which was then run by a family that was very very pro-life and pro-family, and they agreed to run them. So whenever we had any money for television advertising after that, it went to CHCHTV in Hamilton. In, in, after the interim was started because of all this, I, somebody said, well, what do you know about running a newspaper? I said, nothing. So they said, well, do you think you're going to be able to carry this off? I said, we'll see. So we started off, and 30-some-odd um, years later, the interim is still going. Still going strong, still getting the message out there. Then when we saw it was necessary to get involved with the new media, with the uh, internet, etc., the interim newspaper started LifeSite News, which we're going to hear about today as well. And um, both of them, especially uh, LifeSite now, is doing a wonderful job internationally, and it's become the, the uh, the voice of the pro-life and family movement around the world. In Britain, uh, John Smeaton, who is the head of the SPUC, the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children, tells me that before his staff starts work each day, they're all to read what's on life site first, then they go and read. When I was in the Philippines in my role as vice president of the International Right to Life Federation, I met a priest and he said, oh, do you know um, life site? And I said, yeah, I know. No life site. He said, uh, <clears throat> the, Our first year medical students are all told, log on to life site every day. He said, By the end of the first term, they're all saying to me, Hey, Father, you see what's on life site? Did you see that? Did you see what's happening all over the place? And when life site performs a wonderful service in, uh, in telling the, uh, the bishop's organization here in Canada, that the funds that they're sending to various countries are being used to promote abortion instead of them being applauded and patted on the head and saying thank you very much, instead they're attacked. Very difficult to, to watch that happen, but nevertheless that's, uh, that's what happens. Philip Wilcox said to me one, one day, he said that I'm thinking of removing Catholic charities from the United Way campaign. And I said, why would you do that? And he said, because they decided to include Planned Parenthood in the United Way campaign. And I said, what's Planned Parenthood? And he said, well, they're the largest abortion referral agency in the world, and they operate more abortuaries in the United States than anyone else. So I thought, oh yeah, that's very interesting, very gutsy. Well, his priest's council opposed them. They kept talking, don't, don't do that, in your grace, don't do that, don't withdraw, don't withdraw. But he had the courage to do it. With the, uh, with the interim, we began canvassing all the candidates for election. Now, we are not for the Liberals, and we're not for the Conservatives, and we're not for the NDP. What we're for is good men and women who are pro-life and pro-family and prepared to stand up for it, and that's who we support. Now people say, well, that's not a good strategy. Well, uh, Harper's really pro-life and he's waiting till he gets the majority. Harper's not pro-life. I met him years ago when he was with the Reform Party. Uh, this is not a winning issue for him. He's not pro-life. Oh yes, that's all we have to do is wait till he gets into power. 
Now I'm being told by the pro-life members of the uh, conservative caucus that they're, they're whipping them so badly in the caucus. They don't want them to bring up any pro-life and pro-family measures as private members' motions or bills, as Stephen Woodworth is attempting to do to define uh, when human life begins. As if we all didn't know. Today there are, there are a number of people, lots of them new to the pro-life movement, who demand a law, any law. We don't want any law. We want a law that stops the killing of children from the time of conception onward. People will argue, isn't it better to have something rather than nothing? No, we had something. Well, it was going to be airtight, it wasn't. 60,000 babies being killed every year, doctors lying about how old the baby was. They put in there the life and health of the mother. And the World Youth Organization, oh, pardon me, the World Health Organization classified health as anything. Oh, I'm depressed today. Okay, you can have an abortion, whatever, whatever. There were no limitations whatsoever. We got involved at the United Nations at the urging of John Paul the Great about 15 years ago because he was concerned about what was happening with non-governmental organizations at the United Nations pushing a special uh, interest. They were pushing for abortion as an international human right and special rights for homosexuals and lesbians. So we got involved, we sent people to Cairo, Copenhagen, Beijing, Istanbul, Rome, uh, Lisbon, all these different conferences around the world dealing, supposed to be dealing with very good topics and each time uh, the delegates got there they found it was, they were being pushed to, to promote abortion as an international right. So if you spoke out against it, you could be arrested uh, and taken to trial and if found convicted, go to jail for being opposed to all this. We couldn't believe what was happening. We argued with the Catholic leaders here and the leaders of other faith communities and they couldn't believe it either until they began studying it and they found, good Lord, you're right. You're right, that's what's happening. The politicians in the Ontario legislature who once again this week made a deal with uh, one another, all party deal, that uh, they wouldn't have a recorded vote so that you and I wouldn't know how our representatives have voted. Yeah, on a transgender bill, which passed and forged between all groups that the, we wouldn't tell, we won't let the people know because we don't want to have to face them on election day and, and tell them where we voted on this so they did it very quietly.